Okay, another really cool problem is uh, we're going to find the rotational kinetic energy of a tire on a Jeep traveling at 70 miles per hour um, down the highway. Um, so here we have, um, again, the directions for the problem. Um, this wheel is going to be 20 inches in diameter, um, and it's going to have a mass of 34 kilograms, and of course we're traveling at 70 miles per hour. All right, now first is to convert, do a little unit conversion. Uh, our 70 miles per hour into meters per second so that it works better with our formulas and our concepts. Um, here's a little conversion and then we have uh, 31.29 meters per second. Alright, now to do a little diagramming. Um, the diameter of this wheel is 20 inches and so the radius would be 10 inches. And again a little unit conversion that would be um, to meters from inches to meters that would be that uh, our radius being 0.254 meters, um, just so that we have, and this is just so that we have a um, an overall idea of what's happening. Um, basically, uh, the other forces are canceling out. Uh, the jeep is not sinking into the ground. It's not blowing up. It's not doing anything else. And of course, we're um, neglecting air resistance or anything else that would further complicate this problem, other than just finding the rotational energy of one of these wheels. All right. Let's get into the fun stuff. Now, this wheel has a, um, a circumference. Uh, circumference is 2 pi r, so the circumference without uh, multiplying pi into that to make it, um, just to keep it simple for now, is 0.508. Um, this is, again, this is, this is understood to be meters. Um, now, uh, kinetic uh, rotational energy is one is understood to be 1 half times the moment of inertia times the angular speed. Um, we can break this up into a summation. Um, of course, we can pull the one half out; it's a constant. And a summation of the mass times the uh, square of the velocity. Now, this is generalized for uh, a circle that wouldn't be, or or something that would be circular but not quite a perfect circle. Um, however, I'm not going to account for inconsistencies in the rubber and the slight variances and densities of the um, of the rim here just again just to keep things simple so um, if we um, break up this summation you can see that it's again one half times each mass times the square of each velocity of each piece of the circle um, and then because we're using a circle we can break this up into the angular speed which is 2 pi over t and v which is 2 pi r over t, and we can see that the, we can pull out the 2 pi t times the r and see that this is really just um, omega times the perpendicular radius here. So we're going to, um, so we can substitute this pi and this r for v. And this is exactly what we do in the next step. Again, one half on the outside times each mass of each piece that has a, a particular. Um, angular speed and radius squared. Um, again, and this is remember this is a summation, so we can sum it all the way across. But however, because this is a perfect, we're, we are assuming that this is a perfect circle, and we're not um, we're not counting for different inconsistencies. Um, we can just assume that this is equal mass. It has the same angular speed throughout, and the radius stays the same throughout the circle. So this greatly uh, simplifies our equation down to one half m times the square of um, omega r. Okay, now just remember or recall what our actual pieces are. Uh, the mass of the wheel is 34 kilograms. The radius is um, 0.254 meters and to calculate the angular speed we have um, 31.29 meters per second times the 2 pi radians Point, um, over 0 0.508 pi meters. Now this makes sense because uh, this 0 0.508 pi meters is our um, is our circumference, and it can be understood that if you kind of break up the circle into a line and you stretch it, um, that this the, the this would be traveling 0 0.508 pi meters for every time that there is one revolution. So um, our units cancel out. We get radians per second, which is what the angular speed is, and numerically we get 123.188. All right, now to plug everything in, um, there we go. Uh, multiplying out through everything, 
the radians kind of go away, uh, and, and we get meters squared over seconds squared, and the numbers come out to 16,643.826 kilograms, um, kilogram meters squared over seconds squared, or in other words, 1.6643826 times 10 to the fourth joules, which is uh, the unit for energy. So there you go. That's how you find the rotational kinetic energy of a tire of, or the wheel of a vehicle. All right. Thank you.